Hi, this is Bryant. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at Jamboard. Jamboard is a digital whiteboard and is part of the G Suite platform. That means you can store Jamboard files called Jams in your Google Drive. All of the features of Jamboard are free. If you have a Google account, you already have Jamboard. In this tutorial, we'll explore how you can use Jamboard in your classroom. To begin, visit google.com and log in with your school account. Once you're logged in, you'll see the app launcher. Jams is an application within the app launcher, but I'm going to show you how to do everything from Google Drive because that seems a little more natural. So to begin, visit your Google Drive. From your Google Drive, click on the new button, hover over more, and then select Google Jamboard from the options. This will open a new tab with a new Jam file. Click on Untitled Jam in the upper left hand corner, and we're going to give this a new name. Once you have your name, click OK. Along the left side, you'll see a toolbar. This includes a draw tool, an eraser tool, the select tool, sticky note, image, and laser tool. Click the draw tool to select it. You'll notice that the cursor changes to a pen. With the draw tool selected, you can draw on the board. Click the draw tool again, and you'll see that you can switch between the pen, the marker, the highlighter, and a brush. I'm going to go ahead and draw one of each of these so you can see what they look like. From the draw menu, you can also change colors. Here I'm going to switch to yellow and draw a line. The eraser tool does what you would expect. It erases anything that you've drawn. The sticky note tool lets you add a square note to your board. You have a couple of different color options here. So you can select between green, blue, pink, and orange. I'm going to make a quick note here and click save. After you've created your note, you can click cancel to close the sticky note dialog. Using your select tool, you can move your sticky note around. While I have it selected, you'll notice that it's on top of any drawings. And after I no longer have it selected, it falls to behind all of the drawings. You'll see the dots at the corners of the sticky note. The two bottom ones allow you to resize the sticky note while the top left one lets you rotate it. So you can click that and drag it to rotate it freely. If you hold down the shift key while you drag, it will rotate in 45 degree increments. The triple dot menu in the upper right hand corner lets you edit, so you can change the text, change the color. You can also, from that triple dot menu, duplicate if you want to make copies of them or delete. You can also copy and delete your sticky note using the typical hotkeys. So while having it selected, you can click Control C to copy your note and Control V to create duplicates of it. So you can create a whole bunch of sticky notes very quickly using hotkeys. To delete a sticky note, you can select it and press delete, or you can select it and hit backspace. I'm gonna delete the rest of these the Add Image feature is similar to adding images from other G Suite applications. From here, you can upload from your computer, you can search directly from Google, you can insert from your drive, or you can upload photos from your Google Photo account. To upload a photo from your computer, you can click the button to browse to the file, or if you have the file in a folder, you can drag it to the Upload dialog to insert it into your whiteboard. Once you have it inserted, you'll see you have the dots on the corners of the image. So you can resize it or you can rotate it if you need to. You also have the triple dot menu, so you can duplicate the picture or delete it if you needed to. You can also insert directly from Google search. Since this video is on the internet, it has to have a cat in it. So I will add a cat picture. While I have this here, I'm going to show you a little thing about the drawings that we added earlier. When you have the picture inserted, you'll notice that the pen and the marker drawings are opaque and you can't see through them, but the highlighter and the paintbrush are much more translucent. That's just something to keep in mind if you're drawing over a map or drawing over text. The last tool in the toolbar is the laser. You can use the laser to highlight areas on your whiteboard while you're giving your lecture. Students could also use this feature, but only if you've given them edit rights to your whiteboard. Your whiteboard can have multiple pages. Each page in a jam is called a frame. The frame bar at the top of the screen allows you to navigate all of your frames. If you click on this rectangle at the top, you'll see a thumbnail of your frame. To the left and to the right of the thumbnail, you'll see blue plus circle icons. If you click one of those, that'll add a frame 
before or after the thumbnail. You'll see the frames are numbered at the top. The frame we're looking at now is selected and is outlined in blue. If you select the different thumbnails that present that slide. So with our new slide, I'm gonna say hello. And from our frame bar, you can see that we can toggle between the two. While the frame bar is collapsed, you can use the arrow buttons to go from one page to the next. If you're on the last frame and you click next frame, that will actually create a new frame. So now we have a third frame here. And then here in the frame bar, you can see a thumbnail of those frames. From the frame bar, you can also drag a frame around the frame bar to change the order. Mistakes can happen. So I'm gonna make a change here and I'll show you the undo and the redo button. If you click undo, that will undo the latest change you've made. The redo button brings it back. So you can go back and forth between mistakes you've made and undo them if you needed to. Each of these buttons has a hotkey that goes with it. So undo is control Z, so I could use control Z. Or I could do control Y to step forward through my changes. These hotkeys are worth learning. Um, they work with pretty much all of the Google Suite applications. Next to undo and redo, you'll find the zoom dropdown. The fit option sizes the jam to fit your screen. You can also select 25, 50, 100, or 200%. You could also zoom in and zoom out by using hotkeys. In this case, control, alt, and plus will zoom in, and control, alt, and minus will zoom out. The background option uh, allows you to have a dotted, a ruled, a squares or graph, which are both like graph paper backgrounds or a couple different colors. So here you can change between the different background options. This one might be kind of handy for math teachers or if you want a couple different color variations or something that looks kind of like a chalkboard. Here I'm going to go back to grid. One thing to note, the clear frame button clears all drawings, notes, and images, but it leaves the background behind. So if you want to reset the background, you have to click the button to change it back. You'll find a triple dot menu next to the share button. That's the more actions menu. From there, you can rename, which is similar to clicking on the title like we did earlier. You can download as a PDF, which creates a multi-page PDF, one page for each frame of your jam. You can save the current selected frame as an image, which will download as a PNG file. Remove deletes the jam or moves it to your trash folder. While make a copy makes a copy of your jam. Sharing a jam is similar to other G Suite files. When you share a jam, you only have two options. You can share it as editor, which gives them full rights to add anything or remove anything, or viewer, which removes the toolbar or any other way to modify the jam. The easiest way to share the jam is to share the link to something like Google Classroom or send it out via an email. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Add a comment if you have any questions. Share with a friend if you think you can help them. A like and subscribe would also be appreciated. Let me know if I can help. Thanks.